This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. When someone tells you that they have good news and bad news to share with you, which one would you rather hear first? I fall into the category of give me the bad so I can just wash it down with the good. Give me that rainy day because I know that there's a day of sunshine right behind it. Well, today I have good news and I have bad news. First, the bad news. We aren't perfect. I know, shocker, right? We mess up. We're tarnished, broken, flawed, disobedient, greedy, self-serving, judging. We just don't live up to our potential. We don't always live according to the will of God. Our actions many times send us down a path that goes in the opposite direction of our God, a path that might look enticing, it might seem exciting, it might even be adventurous, but it's a path which turns out to be lonely and dark, underwhelming, full of regret, an absolute dead end. Yeah, we've all been there before, and maybe some of us are there right now. This is the bad news. Our own actions move us further and further away from our God. Lucky for us, there's also good news. Good news found in Jesus. Good news given to us by our loving God who continues to interject himself into our lives so that we might change our course, change our attitude, and change our condition. Our God gives us the opportunity to trade in the old and to go home with the new. Imagine, if you will, that you have an old, beat-up hoopty of a car with its ripped two-tone seats and the tailpipe dragon, and you take that car to the dealership. And when you're at the dealership, they freely and without payment, they give you the keys to a brand-new 2020 model, and say, they say, go ahead, go, you're free to leave. And as you pull off the lot, the salesman's just standing there, cheerfully waving goodbye. Imagine, if you will, walking into a department store dressing room, trying on a brand new outfit and being encouraged to just stroll on out of the building, looking like a million bucks, no payment needed whatsoever. This is the mindset of our God. He lets us dump all of our transgressions and our sins and our mistakes and our disobedient behavior right there at the foot of the cross. And then what? We then walk away with a new life, an altered direction, a fresh start as we glow with the promise of the resurrection, which is emanating from our hearts. This is our God. He's always this generous. It's just how he rolls. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus shares with us the parable of the two sons. Now, basically, Jesus is telling the story to the chief priests and the elders of the temple in order to describe the two types of people there are out there in the world. Now, the story goes like this. The father tells the first son to go to work in the vineyard. The son says, nah, I'm good. But then he has a change of heart. He repents of his ways and of his non-action. And he goes and he does what the father says. Second son, he receives the same instructions. Go, work in my vineyard. He gives his dad a thumbs up and says, Hey, dad, I'm on it. And he ends up not following through. Jesus' question is then, Which brother does the will of the father? Well, the first son, of course. The one who repents and turns to the father's will. Jesus then takes the opportunity to slam the authorities by lumping them into the category of the second son. All talk and no action. He does all this while praising the tax collectors and the prostitutes, saying that they have repented of their suspect and shady ways, and they have found favor with God. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. One thing that we learn about our God as we study these actions of Jesus is that he requires obedience. He wants us to not just listen intently, to his words and his instructions. He wants us to follow in his ways and live with compassionate and loving hearts. That's the bar that he sets for us. 
But we know what the outcome is. We know that our humanity often is working against us. We know that we are going to fall short of God's expectations. And that is when we turn to God for that trade in. For when we turn to the Lord and walk in his ways and commit ourselves to him, we see that we can overcome anything. God is with us in our sorrows, in our suffering, in our darkest and foggiest moments, in the lowest of lows. As we experience weakness, it is God who provides strength. As we suffer from chaos, he provides peace. As we are overwhelmed with loneliness, he jumps in the front seat and he takes the wheel. And nowhere is this more evident than in the story of Job. If you recall Job from the Old Testament, he is a good and faithful servant of God who seemingly has it all. He's got the wealth, he's got health, he's got a great family, he's got land, you name it. Then what happens? He loses everything. His livestock, they are stolen, his servants, they are killed, his family dies when the roof of the house collapses on them during a meal. Job's body becomes covered in itchy sores from head all the way down to his toes. Life is absolutely miserable for Job. Yet he's not alone. God is with him through the pain, through the misery, through the suffering. God is by his side. In Barbara Brown Taylor's book, Home by Another Way, Taylor has some very profound words about suffering. She says this, she says, The worst thing that can happen to us, the absolute worst thing that can happen, is, to, is not to suffer without reason, but to suffer without God, without any hope of consolation or rebirth. In other words, without the opportunity to do a trade and to start things all over again. This type of scenario would be an epic fail. Things wouldn't, couldn't get much worse. For we know when we turn to our God, he's right there with us, making sure that we aren't alone in the journey. He is there granting us patience and perseverance, perspective and peace, no matter what curveballs are thrown in our lives. So maybe we should always be looking for ways to turn to our God. Sunday morning was a thrilling day here at House of Prayer Lutheran Church in Houston as we celebrated the confirmation for five of our young people in the congregation. Now, this journey for these kids has been fun-filled, yet it's been challenging, it's been intriguing, and probably other times boring. It's been exciting and eye-opening. But through it all, it has been transforming as each one of our ninth graders have experienced God speaking to them in different ways, instructing and guiding, and leading, and encouraging. These students have learned to trust in the Lord, to follow in his ways, and to believe that the promise of Jesus Christ, it's for them too. How awesome is that? But even with this confidence in their faith, they've learned that the path ahead of them, it's much like the paths that are ahead of all of us. These paths are not always going to be smooth or straight. They won't necessarily be predictable or visible or enjoyable. Our thoughts, they're going to become clouded. Our faith will waver. We will stray from our God. During these times, it is essential that we remember that it is never too late to return to our God. He meets us right where we are with his arms wide open, ready to embrace us and to protect us from ourselves, but also from all that that is around us. So where does that leave us? It leaves us with the opportunity to make things right by returning and trusting in God. For in him and only in him do we find a companion who will always see things through to the end. In the book of Ezekiel, we read these words, Cast away all your transgressions and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Turn then and live. Turn and live. Make God the focus of your actions and your words. Use Jesus as that filter that you see through to make your decisions and to live your life. Trust that this good news of love will always be sufficient for you. Take the opportunity to trade in that old way of living 
and get yourself a new heart, a new spirit, and a new way of living. For our God is always this generous. It's just how he rolls. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? See y'all next week. Later.